Probably is. Right. Try this again. Pause this. All right. Here we go. 23 seconds back in the uh in the chat. We'll see uh if anyone's out there, go ahead and give us a, a shout out again. Yes, I am alive. Uh, let me know if this is working out any better. Buttery smooth now. Awesome. Much better. Apparently, kind of. And it just went down again. All right. It's telling me that it's in the yellow. I don't know what it's looking like on you guys' end. Um, this is kind of frustrating because I had everything dialed in. I turned it off and, <laughs> and again, thanks Pete. All right. You need my dial up? Yeah, apparently I do. It's still going, still working, awesome. Okay, says it's in the orange or uh, yellow, so I don't know if it, uh, if it gets choppy or anything, but uh, as we go, just let me know uh, kind of how it looks. So looking good. All right. Man, I've upgraded so many different things on the uh the whole system over here that I get frustrated when things that I've paid money to upgrade on stop working the way that they're supposed to. Uh I digress. Uh anyway, so as I was saying in the first stream before the second stream and now we're on the third stream, uh technology, huh? Yeah, tell me about it. <clears throat> um so today's uh today's two minute tuesday was all about uh different resources that i had to uh to just share in order to be able to sell our work uh even more so uh we can talk about that i'd love to talk about that if you guys would like to but at the same time i think that that's a kind of a limited conversation um so i wanted to open this conversation up uh to anything that you guys have going on uh that you'd like to talk about um, so what are the different struggles that you're having within your photography and uh, maybe struggles that you're having within certain projects that you're working on right now and we could start diving into those uh, and just get rolling right into a, a good conversation. So as you guys are, are kind of formulating what it is that you would like to throw out there for the conversation, um, I'll, I'll share a couple things that I just recently started up. So the other night, <clears throat> I actually printed off... Uh, some of the images for the new zine that I'm working on. And uh, this is an interesting one. So I'm kind of working on the, the title for the zine and kind of the uh, overall how to explain the concept, but uh, I believe it's gonna be kind of a call and response or even uh, the word harbinger kind of comes to mind to where each image is a harbinger for the next. And uh, each of the images, and, and this is kind of, you know, somewhat of a standard sequencing flow but at the same time uh it's just a unique place where i'm just thinking through what does it look like for a project to be based off of each image calling out to the next image um to where depending on whatever it is because normally how i build things is each spread is based off of each other and kind of plays off of each other so there's kind of a call and response there um, but at the same time, this one is going to be a bit of a different progression. So I'm really excited to go through this. Uh, I have the pool of images. The pool of images kind of came from an initial um, call and response to it. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't know. This is going to be one that I think I'm probably going to try and print a little bit nicer. Uh, I'm going to be reaching out to see if I could get some, um, oh, what is it called? Duo printing or like litho printing and, and different things like that done. So uh, that's something that I just started working on this week. Um, I also have uh, a few videos in the works right now. Uh, so I'm excited to, uh, to start diving into some more editing. Uh, I felt like this last month, maybe even month and a half to two months has just been so lacking, uh, on the video side from me and I really do miss it. So getting back into the swing of things to where now I have a couple videos coming out each week, uh, and not just the two minute Tuesday, but also other content that we get to, uh, to dive in, into and, and have a conversation on. Uh, I'm really excited with where some of these things are going. So. All right, let's see here. Pete says, uh, I shot a Diana Mini 
over the weekend. I'm pretty impressed with the results. Nice. Uh, is that just a, that's a 35 millimeter Diana? Is that what that is? <laughs> I also see Pete, you said, put your main down. It may improve the bandwidth. That's funny. Yes, actually, that is, Alan, you're completely correct. That's a big reason on why I shoot film is because I, I do not, especially like somebody put an Olympus, I think it was an Olympus, either an Olympus or a, uh, a Sony in my hands a couple months back, and I was just looking at it, and I just feel like it's a, the way that I've described it in the past is when I look at the dials and, and all the different controls and everything in these new cameras is, they just feel like a cockpit of a, a fighter plane, and I just, there's information overload for me, so that's why I like manual things. Uh, if it if it works, or if it doesn't work, chances are it's more of a user error than it is a, a mechanical error. Let's see here. Pete says, can I buy a zine on 531 at 1159? Um, sure. I don't, oh, 531, 1159. Are we 11 minutes in? I don't know. Anyways, I don't get the reference, but I'm sure. Oh, today's the 30. No, okay. Today's. Oh, okay. I got you. I'm okay. I'm still. My brain is. Still, I didn't even know you were still over there. What are you doing? Well, he's just sitting, hiding in our staircase. What are you doing? She's creeping on me, guys. All right, <laughs> man, today's live stream is already off to a very interesting start. Oh, man, this threw me off my game. Uh, hopefully, we can only go up from here, but anyways, that was for Jacob. Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> so, oh, man. Anyways, so Emily's hiding in the staircase. We got that going for us. Um Emily is the true moderator. Yes, she is. I do uh, I do watch what I say when she's around. So she's moderating me while Jacob, I guess, is moderating all the other comments. So, yes, John, I'm back. We made it back. HFPI Films, LOL. You got a lot of LOLs there. Let's see here. Alan says, that's a cool idea with each image depicting or dictating the next image. Uh, or maybe each image leading to the next is a better way to put it. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a really unique process, and I, I guess I'll probably have a better way of understanding and explaining it after I go through because these aren't sequenced by any means. Um, these are just the initial, like I, I do these prints off of my inkjet printer, and then uh, as I'm going through, I start folding them together and start working them. And I think I have 37 to 40 something like that in here. Uh, different images and it'll probably get called down to about 12 to 14 um, It's gonna be a, a much tighter zine than what I'm used to doing I, I typically kind of cram not necessarily cram but work a lot of images into the zines um, So this is gonna be much more selective and uh, very not that the other ones aren't intentional they obviously are but uh, kind of a different intentionality with it so All right. Let's see here. Jacob asks, uh, do you think that there's an objective point that needs to be reached before you start looking at trying to sell work? Um, you know, that's a good question. I, I think that finding, uh, you know, an objective point or even a uh, subjective point uh, I think finding a, a point or finding a reason to photograph in the first place is a good thing to hunt down. At the same time, um, there's a lot of, I don't know, I don't, I can't really speak for them, but there's a lot of people that sell work. I don't know if they're successful in it, but, um, you know, if you go to any arts and crafts show, um, I go through a lot of different craft shows uh, around town, and every single time there's always three to four different landscape photographers two of them do hdr and i guess they're only uh, and I, again i'm not trying to bash on this type of thing but a majority of the time when i walk through booths like this i'm not seeing work with any kind of purpose other other than 
just making something to look cool to sell. Um, so I don't necessarily know that you have to. Uh, you know, I see people walking out of these guys' booth having purchased things. Um, so I think if you have work that people find intriguing, I think that they can put their own, um, you know, plot and point to. Um, but at the same time, for me, I, I think a lot of what I do and a lot of the way that I approach my work is I like to have understanding of why it is that I photograph the thing that I photographed or why it is that I'm putting together the project that I'm putting together. Um, so the different zines, the conceptual ideas, the um, things that I pour into these, you know, even if the conceptual idea is each image leads into the next, I think there's a, an informed pattern that happens in there that becomes the um, point of recognition in the first place or at the end of things. So uh, I would say yes and no. I, I mean, you could start selling work. It, it, here's the thing. If you want to, there's a lot of audiences that don't care about what the work actually means. They just want to have um, photos of flowers and of landscapes and, you know, people much uh, large part of people out in the world will buy things just because they think that the subject matter is cool or nice or neat, you know, and put any kind of word to it. Um, if you walk through and look through your, your local, um, uh, like department store or anything like that, that has some home decor, there's a lot of, uh, just terrible pieces of decor in there that people buy because it has flowers on it and they went with a flower motif for their, uh, living room or anything like that. So, um, I would think that if you're looking to sell to much more of a, a fine art market, um, in more of a, uh, crafts base market, like, uh, I mean, not necessarily cr arts and crafts, but like craft in an artistic vision based market, people buy based off of, uh, a certain understanding of what it is that the subject matter is about, um, or abstraction on how it makes them feel or anything like that. So, um, I don't know. I, I don't necessarily know, Jacob, if that answers your question, but I think that there's kind of a both and it really depends on your market. Um, I think if you go back and, and think about the, the topic that we talked about a couple weeks ago about who your target market is, um, I think that will really inform something there. You know, if your target market is, uh, I don't know, middle-aged women, you could probably get away with selling puppy photos. And, and <laughs> this is a very horrible like uh generalization but uh you know puppy photos and in flower photos and you could go and do macro photos of of whatever and not really have much of an intention um they just want something that looks cool that their friends will comment on so i don't know again that's kind of a gross uh generalization but at the same time I, I do think that there's some truth there and whether it's middle-aged women or not it's just there's certain demographics will, will just buy things because it looks cool or it looks different um that's why hdr photos still sell <laughs> what's really in the glass i can't tell you no, it's just water i stopped drinking anything else on uh on the live streams because it always like like frogs up my throat so water is about the only thing that uh okay all right let's see here hp or h hfpi films says ever considered doing portraits that's interesting that'd be interesting to see in your work i do a lot of portraiture actually um so i meant a zine featuring portraits okay I was going to say, because I do shoot a lot of portra portraits. Um, I worked as a professional portrait photographer. I can't even talk today. Pet professional portrait photographer for quite a while. Um, Emily and I did weddings for quite a while. Um, as far as working it into a zine, uh, there is a project that I want to do with medium or large format. So I do want to do a lot of four by five portraits. Um, that <clears throat> The thing is... I do have a very specific project in mind uh, that will utilize portraits and that will probably become a, a zine or a book project at some point, but it's really uh, diving into and getting to document portraiture of things that I admire, but that I will never uh, step into probably learning. Um, 
skateboarding. I want to do skating portraits. Um, I would love to learn the guitar at some point, but at this point, I just don't have the time to sit down and put towards it. I'm, I'm already trying to put things into uh, to play everywhere else. So um, other musicians and, and guitar players and pianos or pianist um like jazz pianists and blues guitarists and all these different things um even like uh girls in ballet and guys in ballet and different ballet dancers things that i admire um people that are in orchestra and and the symphony and and stuff like that so i i just want to give kind of recognition to these things that i would love to pick up at some point but never will um just due to the nature of life i don't have enough time to pick up everything that i want so instead i'd like to take the thing that i have picked up that i have honed in well and uh and honor the other crafts in the the people that have taken time in those crafts with um, my photography so that's probably uh the only thing that i could think of right now that would be portrait based so Jahan said, I'm so keen on finishing my next zine, it will be completely different to what I've done before. Nice. I like that. <clears throat> Pete Donovan says, street portraits would be a cool zine. It could be, for sure. Uh, let's see here. Kit Young, what's up, buddy? Good seeing you out there. You came on a, uh, a good evening <laughs> show. I'm, I'm falling apart over here. We started off rough, and I've just been having a difficult time uh, catching back up. I also just woke up from a nap. <laughs> I took off from work early today to come home and get a nap in beforehand, and I guess I should not have done that because uh, then I ended up running into all issue, all sorts of issues that I could have worked out if I would have tested everything before uh, my nap. Alan says, I'm very interested in landscape photography, and I think that there's a big issue in that it's a genre almost solely governed by an aesthetic view. Uh, the beauty of landscape trumps all, all any efforts to say something about the land or how you relate to it. Um, I don't necessarily know that that's 100% true. I do think that there's a lot of landscape photographers that are just going after the beauty of the landscape, which is like, do not get me wrong, that, that in itself could be uh, a great point to make. I mean, um, you know, Ansel Adams was documenting and giving weight to national forests for so long and national parks and in restoring kind of a lost vision of uh, of national parks, you know. So I do think that there's something to be had with just capturing the beauty of a landscape. But then I think of someone like, um, actually, uh, let me grab the zine because I do have it. One of these right here. So I think of someone like um, my buddy Justin Lowry, who who does this. Uh, his first issue was Mojave Monochrome. Um, so this is the the zine here, um, but it, it's part of his Salt and Light series. And and I think that this is he calls it a, a quarterly like photographic journal. Um, but what he does is he catalogs these beautiful beautiful landscapes and then uh, really writes some amazing amazing pieces to. Uh, go alongside of them. I, I think that landscape photography and really a lot of photography really pairs well with also authoring articles that could be paired up with it. Um, offering something within either an artist's statement um, that makes, you know, uh, intentional uh, conversation on the land or anything like that. Um, but then also pairing it up with with other thoughts in in conversations and even just poems and and kind of allowing I've seen poetry and in landscape work extremely well um, back and forth. So I'll give you guitar lessons via Skype. Thanks, John. <laughs> That'd be fun. Um, we do have I have three guitars right behind me. So I, I someday I, I romanticize the idea of just picking it up and putting up YouTube and just starting. Um, but it probably won't be for a while. But anyways, so Alan, I, I do think that there's a lot that can be done, and I think that that's a good challenge. You know, I like the fact that um, that it is a challenging medium to not allow it or to not have it just stand alone, um, but to also have a, an important message to be told alongside it. So I'd be curious to see, Alan, how how you translate that and how you uh, run with that. So. Pedro says, hello, I think I'm a bit late. 
Hey, no worries, buddy. We uh, we actually got started late today, so we're only 20 minutes in right now. Um, so you're right on time. Mark, what's up, buddy? Good seeing you out there. Jacob says, gotta bounce uh, quick. I'll be back. All right. Travis, what's up, buddy? Jules, hey, good seeing you guys out there. Well, then what are we waiting for? <laughs> Uh, Lauer says, hello, Nick. Long time no seeing you live because of school. Well, welcome back. Podcast plus guitar lessons. There we go. Nice. I don't know if you guys noticed, this is actually a, a different mic than what I normally use. Um, so we finally got a second mic. Um, so I know that Jahan and I were talking, and I, I talked to Jahan about this a, a little bit back, but we were talking originally about um, possibly creating a podcast together, and I, I still very, very much would love to do that at some point. Oops. There we go. And um, But our podcast idea has to be put on hold because my, my wife trumps everything, um, and Emily and I are going to be starting a podcast very, very soon. We're actually recording. Uh, we recorded one episode um last weekend yeah it was the weekend that i was sick um so i actually had a very hoarse voice when we recorded it um so we recorded one sample episode had to cut it down so we submitted it to the um uh what was it called squarespace did this thing with gimlet uh called the open call and uh we cut it down to three minutes and submitted it as soon as we find out whether or not we made it into the semifinals um, then we'll probably start moving forward with a uh, proper direction at that point. We have a very solid direction on where we want to take it, um, but we can't really do anything or release anything until we know that we have been made into uh, the, the semifinals or we haven't. Uh, and if we haven't, then the podcast will actually come out much sooner because we'll be doing it by ourselves. If we have, it'll probably take a little bit longer because uh, Gimlet will be helping to... Um, <clears throat> to produce that but at the same time i do think that it's probably a long shot uh that emily and i would actually make it into that so i think that we have very solid content but at the same time um i don't know i just feel like so many things and so many contests these days are very political and we don't go very political with their stuff so um anyway so by the way it it will be if uh I would say within the next month it'll be up and we'll be actually recording more episodes this weekend um, to just have in the can. So if we realize, if we find out that we didn't make it, that we didn't get selected, then we will already have episodes ready to, uh, to post up. So uh, just kind of a little FYI. Let's see here. A.B. Watson says, what's a good starting point when starting to sell prints? Um, so I, I think what you're asking is, can't wait to hear the podcast when it comes out. Thanks, buddy. It will be geared towards, uh, AB, I'll get back to your question. I just want to kind of finish a thought that was going through my head. Um, so it will be geared towards not just film photographers or photographers in general, but, um, the fine art, visual arts kind of across the board, um, which I think is going to be very valuable because Emily and I have two, um, Similar approaches on, on certain areas, but then drastically different approaches. Um, Emily went the academic route, just got her master's in fine arts, uh, and I went the, the street route, right? I got the street smarts, she's got the book smarts, uh, and then the, the perfect pairing of both of those works out really well. We have amazing, amazing conversations as husband and wife and as artist and artist living in home together. Um, just in, like late at night or in the middle of the day, I'll just throw something out or she'll ask me something. And then all of a sudden we go off on a hour and a half tangent. Uh, and we just want to bring these types of conversations to you guys. So, uh, anyways, going back to AB Watson, um, what's a good point, a starting point when selling prints. Um, so AB, if you can kind of expound on that a little bit, what I think you're asking is about like, um print size and price or i, I kind of need a little bit more clarification because it could mean a couple different things and all these things could be ran off in all sorts of different directions so uh hannah hey good seeing you out there all right so uh while ab is responding back and while everyone else is uh formulating some other stuff i, I really i do want to throw this out again and just ask you guys like what is it that you're struggling in your artwork with or what is it that you're struggling to 
formulate or put to words within your artwork i, I would really love to hear that and i really kind of want to dive down that route but um we're 25 minutes in uh i know that we've gotten off to a choppy start but uh if you guys are enjoying the the, the stream so far let's uh, get some thumbs up out there uh to let youtube know that they could continue pushing this out and that it's content that people are enjoying um so uh let's see here alan says i'm doing a project at the moment trying to capture the internal quality of the land around me i live in an area called the golden vale uh, which is a super fertile land interesting i like that that's sort of my response to some of the landscape work i see by artists in my area but you've challenged my view and that's got me thinking again now which is great nice i like that you know and one of the things that i don't want to be a victim of my own prejudices <laughs> That's funny. One of the things that I love about landscape, and I, I didn't realize that I did this, um, and I'm not saying that you should change your your um, current approach or anything, but um, I like when, when I see landscape that is done differently. Um, when I went out to, to Maine back in 2016, uh, I went out with a, kind of a thought process of, okay, cool, this would be a great time for me to really kind of hone in on my landscape skills. And what I ended up doing was I kind of took, a, for lack of better words, I kind of took a portrait of the land that I was photographing. I honed in, and obviously, you guys know me as, as probably a, a detail guy. I love getting details. And this is actually one of the places that I actually realized because it was in um, critique. Um, so going back to this week's question and answer, talking about critiques, uh, at the artist residency, we would go around and we'd show our work and, and have different critiques. So one of the critiques was I was trying to do something and I was trying to force myself into a place where I was photographing landscape in a way that I just don't find intriguing. There's a lot of landscape stuff that I don't find intriguing. But uh, as I was walking through, I just didn't even think about it. I would just get up close and start taking um just close up uh, portraits of the rocks and, and getting the uh, the different algae on the rocks and the the you know the different snails that would be on the rocks or the different grooves and in, in cuts in in the rocks and, and then the trees and the the vines that would go up the trees and all these different things that I would just kind of hone in on and and take these closer intimate portraits of the landscape and I didn't realize that until somebody called me out on it. And they said, look, I, I see you doing two different things within your landscape work. And one of them feels very forced. The other one feels very natural and intimate. Uh, and the very natural and intimate was the detail shots. And they go, I, I feel like you really gravitate towards details. Um, and that was a big thing for me. That was one of the things that kind of caused me to go, you know what? You're actually right. And I've I've been like almost trying to avoid it because I thought that, I don't know, I'd never seen it before and I didn't know what to do with it. Um, but at the same time, it was just a, a different approach to um, to Maine, I guess, to what they'd seen in the past. Because a lot of these guys, had, I mean, some of them were the instructors of the, or the hosts of the artist residency. Um, but anyways, uh, kind of a side tangent. And I don't know, <laughs> my brain's dead today. Uh, but a little side tangent. And that's just one of the things that I enjoy about um landscape is when when people really get in and start doing something that's a little bit different from what the norm is uh, and i think that there is more to say you know breaking free from the norm not to say that there isn't plenty to say in that way as well michael says uh i think i'm currently struggling on sticking to a project like i have multiple projects on the go and i need to just commit to one and see it through hmm I, you know, Michael, I guess it depends on, on what your best way of working is. Right now, I have multiple different projects uh, kind of up in the air. And I don't know. For me, I personally enjoy working on that. And at the same time, I know when it's time to actually pick one and, and hone in on it, you know. Um, but at the same time, don't feel bad if you're kind of juggling a couple different projects. I like working on something and working it, working it, working it. And then when I hit a wall with that, I'll jump over to something else. Um, lately, I've hit a wall with my my uh, geometric stuff. Um, just, I don't know. It, 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 I'm not sick and tired of it. I actually still look at the work. And a lot of the work that I have for this new zine is, is geometric stuff. 
Um, but at the same time, I just hit this place with it to where I was like, you know what? I just feel like I need to shelf it for now. And um, <clears throat> this year, I've had a really, really giant focus back on street photography, as you could probably tell by looking through my my um, feed. I've gone back to doing very, very um, street scene, very close to people, and I've really enjoyed it. So I like jumping back and forth between multiple different projects. Um, but you know, Michael, also at the same time, if it is something that you're recognizing about yourself that you do need to hone in on something and finish it, um, then I would definitely say pick one and just go with it. Mark says, creative struggle, staying focused uh, on a single thing long enough to where I feel I am sinking my teeth in and improving. It's fun to explore, but I want to focus and improve. Sure. Same kind of thing that Michael was talking about. One day it's portraits, next it's abstract, then street. Nice. Just reading through a couple of different comments to see which ones are linking together. Yeah, you know. And again, it, it really comes down to, I, I, don't, I don't like sharing too much. I mean, obviously I do enjoy sharing uh, what it is that I do in my whole process because I hope that people can learn from that, but... Um, you know, my thought process is much different to where I enjoy having the actual photographic um, exploration be an exploration, be kind of a, a free flowing exploration, be a response to the things that uh, I'm looking at. And then it's on the backside that I start honing in and focusing down and narrowing down on projects. Um, and then there's also times where I am very kind of narrowed in on a certain conversation that I'm having. But um, I don't know. I, I mean, I would just say if you guys are if you guys are thinking through it and going I I feel like I'm supposed to uh hone in on one then I would just challenge that and say that might not necessarily be true. Um but if you're also at the point where you're going, you know what? I feel like everything else that I'm doing is just falling apart and I I just I really just have a strong desire to hone in on one, then I would say definitely do it. Um, but don't do it if you if you think that it's what you're supposed to do. I think that there's plenty of different ways of approaching things. And, uh, you know, I, I'm realizing how much of the photographic community is doing things because it seems to be what everyone else is doing. Not saying that that's what you guys are doing, but I'm, I'm also catching myself to where it's going. Um, or we think that it's what we're supposed to be doing. Um, for me lately, I've, I've honestly just not wanted to get into the dark room. Uh, and I was talking to Jacob about this the other day. I think Jacob's probably not back in here yet, but, um, you know, I, I love the dark room. I love the whole process of everything, but it's so freaking time consuming. Uh, and I'd much rather be working on videos right now and much rather be, um, building zines or even just making prints on the inkjet because it saves time. And, you know, I was saying over and over and over again, I really want to get into the dark room. I really want to get into the dark room. But it was really me just trying to appease the the crowd of, of people that I place myself around because there's a lot of people that I place myself around that really value dark room prints over inkjet prints. And I'm I'm just being honest with myself to the point where I'm going, you know what? I, I, I don't necessarily know that right now I value a darkroom print over an inkjet print. Um, I, I get back to the point at some point. I like I said, I absolutely do love um, printing in the darkroom, but um, having to set up and tear down, having to go through all this stuff is just one of these things to where I'm just going. You know what? Right now, at this point in time, I'm just okay with not doing it, and I'm okay with uh, jumping back in and making inkjet prints for most of my stuff. Um, I'll probably make it more of a, a special occasion because that's what it was already becoming anyways. Um, so I'm just, I'm just going like, I think that there's these things that we think that we're supposed to really admire and really, you know, abide by and stick to even shooting film. I, I really want to challenge a lot of people because I, I've been watching story after story after story on Instagram of people justifying why they go back to shoot digital who cares? I'm like, I, I don't care if somebody goes back to shooting digital. It, it's just one of these things to where I think we have this thought process that everyone else is holding us to a certain standard. Um, this is a big rant and I've kind of moved away from our original point, but uh, I do think that we need to understand like what works for you works for you. I'm not like, don't worry about what other people think and chances are other people 
probably aren't paying that close of attention anyway. Um, so all these different stories within the last, I don't know, I feel like two weeks I've watched like four or five different Instagram stories about why people are going back to digital and they're trying to justify going back to digital, whatever, just shoot whatever you want to shoot. I don't care if it's digital or film. No one cares. Oh, except for Matt Day's audience. Uh, he apparently gets tons and tons of comments when, when he goes back over and shoots digital. Oh, rant over, at least for now, until somebody made another comment and then it gets me started again. Lauer says, I'm working to a zine to promote uh, communist architecture in our modern days in the industrial zone of my city. My city is a mining city and has a lot of awesome industrial stuff. What do you think? I think it's a great idea. I, I enjoy seeing uh, especially interesting architecture. Um, actually, I think I... Oh, I had a zine over here somewhere. This is a zine that someone sent me. Um, this is the one I was talking about a second ago, but um, this is a zine that someone sent me that has um, just incredible, incredible architecture. That's the cover photo. So let me show you guys. I can't even see my screen. There we go. Um, but I just, I, I love zines like this to where all of a sudden you're just going through and you're just seeing unique and interesting architecture and the way that it all plays out and just the the crazy geometric patterns that it creates and and everything like that so uh, i think it's a great idea I, I would definitely suggest going around and just cataloging the different um architecture in your place i think that's a good idea in terms of getting and selling uh getting sales and platform to sell on um, so as far as getting sales, uh, I would I would say go back through and, and rewatch some of the the videos from this series. Excuse me, because uh, the last four videos have all been about getting sales. Um, as far as a platform to sell on, I would say just start on Instagram. The best way to start here's what I would say, and I think I gave this suggestion a week or two ago. Um, print out some four by six prints. Uh, print out three different photos on four by six and sell them for whatever $15 a piece put it up $15 a piece and just put it out there on Instagram put it up on your story um, take proper photos of it you know do the we talked about it last time was the five different mistakes that people make when selling over on Instagram but um, take good photos of the products uh, even frame them and show them in a space or something like that and then put them up and just share the story behind the the image and then ask for the sale um, you know, you'd be surprised on, on what Instagram will do for you with just put, putting something up either on your feed or on your story, uh, and allowing people to see it that way. Justin, what's up, dude? Hey, you just missed it, man. We were just, uh, we we're actually just talking about your Mojave, uh, what is it? Mojave monochrome a second ago. So everyone, this is the Justin Lowry that I was ranting and raving about his booklet a second ago. So, um, just good work, man. Let's see here. Michael says, thanks, Nick. Feel, feeling encouraged. I think the lack of a finished project is eating away at me. I'm sure I've, once I've completed one, I'll learn how to approach others. Thanks for the wise words. Yes, you're welcome. Uh, Hannah says, oops, it jumped down. It's always good to keep it interesting with photography. As you say, Nick, uh, once you hit a wall and, uh, with one, you could shift to another project. Yes. I just like being able to bounce back and forth between things. And maybe that's, you know, maybe that's the uh, mindset that we have these days. I, I realize when I'm reading an article online and I hit a certain dead point in the article, I jump over to another one. Um, but I always come back to it, you know. I think some people would go, oh, well, these lazy millennials or whatever. Um, but at the same time, no, I always come back and finish it. So uh, as long as you finish stuff, I, I don't think that there's any bad way of going about something. Uh, let's see here. London Backpacker says, any Brits worked out the GDPR for street photography yet? What's the GDPR? I'm not sure what that means. And it says, I've got two projects that I want to complete, but I'm honing in on one right now uh, for the arts festival. Then I'll start the other in the next couple of months. Nice. Yeah, you know, I, I think cause one of the things that you could do for yourself is, <coughs> excuse me, is uh really set set like a deadline for one of your projects <clears throat> excuse me this is why i got the water guys 
<clears throat> Man, mm, got a frog in my throat. <clears> throat> um, so set one of the deadlines, uh, like set deadlines for one of the projects. You can continue working on all the different projects, but I think that that's one of the things that has helped me to uh, to really hone in and, and get a project done is I, I do set these deadlines that I go, okay, and I even throw it out there. I'm like, hey, guys, I'm working on a zine, and I kind of put myself on the line um, to everyone else. So, uh, so far, I see it as you still can't take images, but only for personal use. So far, I... So the GDPR, is this some sort of... I'm not sure. Let me know what that means. Justin says, it's kind of funny and sad, actually. The whole dogmatic uh, dogmatism thing around film is really off-putting. Even as a film photographer, it's an easy trap to fall into, though. Justin Lowry says, I think it's a good idea to not be dogmatic and keep an open mind about film versus digital. They're just tools for creating. It's the humanity in our art that matters, not the technology we use. I, I completely, completely agree. And <clears throat> I, I'm at a, kind of at a point to where I want to just start, I don't know, I want to just, don't, don't, don't just confuse, and I, he isn't, I, I, can't, I understand where you're coming from too, um, I just, I think that there's a certain elitism out there that just irritates the, the crap out of me, uh, I, I love film, I absolutely love using film, um, but there's a certain sector and a certain crowd that says film is the only way to make an image and digital images are fake and uh, <laughs> whatever. Uh, I just I think it's the elitism that people think that they're being held up accountable to. But if you know, we need to understand that we're only held to the, the standards that we want to hold ourselves to. Um, if somebody wants to hold themselves to, to only shooting film and anything else is, is heresy to you know to photography then then you know that's them we don't need to uphold to those standards you know at the same time i still love film and i still shoot film for all my personal work except for every once in a while if i don't have my film camera if i'm at work or something and i'm not walking around with my camera I, I pull out the iphone and i take that kind of stuff but at the same time i was catching myself to where you know i found myself starting to justify the reason of using the iphone like when i was planning out the zine that i just did and, and everything like that and i was just like you know what this is just uh it's just ridiculous like who am i trying to impress who am i trying to please i i don't know i'm so far beyond it now it's just oh it just frustrates me that people think that not not that people are you know apologizing for switching back to i'm just i'm frustrated at the the state of the I don't know, the mindset that they would have to be held to someone else's standards. I, I just want to free people from that and let them know, like, dude, who cares what other people think? All right, let's see here. Pete says, it's the millennials that are giving us film shooters crap because we don't shoot digital. Yeah, no, and I, I think it's, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to, I I feel like I'm going to work my way into a corner here because, uh, yeah, anyways, I get very passionate about when people are stuck into a mentality that they shouldn't be stuck in. Uh, Let's see here. Justin says, it's both actually. I get way more crap from old guys about shooting film they say that they've put in their time with film and that they think it's, I'm insane for wasting time with it. Yeah, people have their opinions. I shoot both, both digital and film. Film is more personal for me. Uh, those kids can stick their selfie stick where the sun don't shine. It's funny. He says, I get more conversations with people when I have my film cameras around my neck. I will say the most conversations that I ever had with people is when I had one of my, um, <clears throat> the, like, uh, bing. there we go, this guy, when I had this guy around my neck um, and, and photographed with that, people uh, always stopped and, and talked about it. Oh, is that one of those old Polaroid cameras? Yeah, yeah, it is. At the same time, it slowed me down, so I didn't like it. I don't like being slowed down too much when I'm out on the street. 
Finzi, what's up, buddy? <clears throat> Man, I don't know where this frog came from, but. Alan says, I shoot film and digital, not for any particular reason. I enjoy the difference, uh, benefits of each, just splitting real common sense here. Yes, Justin is. Taking notice of insane people. <laughs> uh, that's funny. And the conversations are amazing. Nice, okay. Alan says, hi, Nick, don't, ever, don't even ask about GDPR. New pain in the rear. Uh, Eastern Europe, or Europe regulations causing hassle over here. Is a privacy law in Europe Union uh, that just went into effect on May 25th. It mainly affects online services that collect personal info, but apparently it has far-reaching ramifications. Interesting. General data protection regulations come in on 25th. Strange. I don't know what all that means, but man, I'm sorry that you guys are going through any of that. Let's see here. Alan says it's a wholesale adjustment extension to current data protection laws. Okay. Interesting. John, what's up, buddy? Lindsay, hello. Anna says I shoot both uh digital and film too, and definitely see don't see a problem with shooting both. Despite that, I also feel film is more personal to me. Alan, see you, buddy. Says he's out. Got a stream or a great stream tonight. Uh, a sort of random one that I really enjoyed. Thank you. It is a random one. This one, I don't know. I don't know if this one's worth people watching back on. <laughs> it's just really just me ranting. Uh, Justin says, yes, elitism. Exactly. I get that with large format, especially. There's a group uh, there that says that it's the right way and judges and criti crit criticizes those who do differently. Uh, they drive people away. Yeah, I just, I don't like any kind of thought process that makes it uh, not approachable by other people. And it's really just people trying to uh, to feel just important about their work and, you know, trying to justify their work over someone else's. And why do we have the need to, to do that? All right. John says, man, I... I've started something here. The whole thing is, is going in this direction. John says, yeah, I agree. I shoot both film and digital for uh, when I need to. But film is more, for me, per, for my personal work, shooting the family and whatnot. Yeah, you know, I honestly, I, I'm, I'm really curious on, on like, I kind of want to get a, a digital Leica so that way I could shoot all of my color work on digital. Uh, I just don't like the whole film process with, with color work because w one of the reasons why I shoot film is so that way I can print it myself, uh, so that way I can develop it myself, and I enjoy that whole process. I don't do any of that with color, and I don't want to do any of that with color. Um, so I honestly have been considering uh, it's out of the finances right now, but eventually getting um, you know a digital Leica uh, maybe like a, I don't know, I can't afford an M10, but that would be the one that I would want because it would feel like my M2 in my hands. Um, to be able to switch back and forth and do all my black and white on the, the M2 and then my uh, color work on the digital. But I don't know. We'll see. Uh, let's see here. AB says, what's your thought on keeping record of print numbers in regards to having limited limited print series of a photo or thoughts on signing your prints i think you should sign your prints um you know that's that's kind of the expression of uh, artistic piece um i do think that prints need should be signed at least that's my opinion um the whole idea of limiting print series i don't know i'm really at a cross with it um, I do editions, um, so there's print editions to where I made a certain amount in the dark room at one point. Um, I think it makes much more sense uh, when doing it that way. If you're actually hand printing something in the dark room and you've worked out, uh, you know, you're dodging and burning and you're printing everything as close to similar as possible. Um, 
future prints and you know if it's all from one batch of paper and, and stuff like that future prints could end up looking different so it'd be part of a different edition is really what it is um it's the same thing so when emily does like litho printing there's additions you you can only make so many prints so uh it's the idea of you know when when she does litho printing you you cover a stone the way that she does it uh is is stone printing so you cover a stone with ink and uh, you continue printing off of that ink until it it dies, you know, until the stone dies, um, or until your end of the day. Uh, you could re-ink it and re-ink it and re-ink it, but once you get to the end of the day, now the stone is dried um, by the next day, and now you have a completely different batch the next time around because the way that the ink adheres um, to the litho stone would be different. So. Um, you know, that's where additions come from. It comes from a very limited edition run. Um, so I don't necessarily do that with my inkjet prints. Um, I, I really only do that, and it's by necessity, uh, with fine art um, prints in the darkroom. Um, just because, you, you know, I'm only in the darkroom for a certain amount of time. Yes, it, thank you very much. The film versus digital debate is really old. I seen I seen someone come out with a video like last week of film and digital which one's better I'm like seriously are we still having oh gosh you know I'm a very friendly person but sometimes I just want to smack people uh let's see here I got gotcha. you as a street photographer uh GDPR may affect how you use your images I got gotcha. you well, just print them out and uh, and put them in galleries. You could still do that, or does it does that uh, affect it too? I don't know. I'm curious to hear if you print out something and you do like an exhibition, or if you just sell a zine. I think that's where uh, where print kind of still reigns supreme. Is uh, it can't be regulated by any kind of online whatever data regulation. All right. Mm -hmm. let's see here I'm, I'm skipping over some of these just intentionally just because I'm, I'm trying to move on from this rant because I will continue going on about it let's see here whomever said all right Thomas Heaton did uh, Thomas Heaton did a time limited edition uh, when he sold an unlimited number of prints for a limited amount of time and then closed out the edition yeah I like that that's a cool idea. I could see doing that with a uh, inkjet, um, something or other. It worked really well. Arguably better than traditional editing methods or additioning methods. Nice, interesting. That's really cool. Yeah, when you uh, when you have a timeline on something, uh, it really really puts people in a place to where they have to act now. So I, I really like that. It creates a, a sense of urgency. Jules says, it might be old for some, but as a young photographer, I really got into it less than a year ago. The debate still takes place in my mind. I can understand that. Yeah, for, for people that, and I, I think that this is the thing, you know, there's still a lot of people that are getting into photography. And then uh, with that comes a lot of people that are still getting into film for the first time. So I think for them, they're, they're just going through these things, but um, yeah. Kit, <laughs> you're like the instigator today. Uh, Hannah says, random question, but where's the best place to sign a print if it's matted on the front or the back? Um, I like to sign on the front, so uh, I don't have any of my matted prints around. Uh, they're all downstairs, which, by the way, um, I, I was going to just sell uh, the matted print that I had for like through Monday for the holiday. Um, but I, I do have a, a limited edi edition to five um, print and I only have three left. So if you want one of those, let me know. But um, I like to sign it in the front uh, on the mat underneath the, the image down to the bottom right. That's that's kind of a standard within the industry. Anytime you go and see a Michael Kenna or a, a Brisson or any of these, actually Brisson would sign them at the bottom um, underneath the actual frame on the print. Um, but yeah, bottom right is kind of a standard for a lot of people. But hey, you know, artistic vision. You could sign it wherever the 
freak you want to sign it you know if you want to sign it in the top left corner go for it you know but bottom right is kind of a, a standard Michael says I have to bounce thanks all for contributing and much love to you Nick thank you so much thanks buddy thanks for jumping in here AB Watson says I use the Leica M240 in second uh, hand it's getting cheaper and cheaper plus the battery is massive lasts me a week on one charge nice that's good to know I'm just still wondering why my preference is to go f to film, I guess. Yeah, it's a good thing to to wrestle through. I think, I, you know, regardless of the process that we use, I think understanding why we gravitate towards one process over another process is a very informative thing to understand. So, Jules, I, I think that that's a good question to ask. Why is it that you're, uh, you know, attracted to film? Um that's yeah that's a good thing to to ask yourself john says there are too many people that need a good smacking <laughs> if i gave into that urge <laughs> london backpacker says possibly we still really don't know i got you sounds like a lot's up in the air with all that so jared says have you seen the documentary salt of the earth about sebastio Salgado? yes i have and it's fantastic um i love sebastio uh, not only as a photographer, but as a, an individual, like the, the, the fact that he planted a freaking rainforest and helped to, uh, bring a rainforest back. That's ridiculous. That's amazing. Mark, see you buddy. Um, but yeah, so if, if you guys haven't seen Sebastio Salgado's salt of the earth documentary, um, I think it's uh, available on Amazon and YouTube. Um, you have to rent it on YouTube, but it's well worth the rental. Um, because it's it's absolutely incredible. That dude's amazing, and his work is incredible. Uh, Justin, I, I'm surprised that you haven't seen that. Honestly, wow, yeah, Justin, you got to go check it out. Um, it's amazing. Gene says I'm a fine art photographer, and I sell prints to collectors. I absolutely need to limit my editions. Uh, most often, five prints in specific format. The notion is very important for collectors and I don't know if there's other part. Yeah, I, I again, this brings me back to a constant thing that I'll say time and time and time again is you have to know who your target audience is. Um, and, you know, it's a, it's a big thing is going, especially with Inkjet. So with Inkjet, if I'm going to limit an edition something, uh, I can make a very, very, like, almost identical print uh, as that later on. You know, I have my settings saved in Lightroom. Uh, I could print out. So there's no, I'm not saying that there's no reasoning to do limited edition inkjet or anything like that. But for me, there's just no reason. Um, it makes total sense to be able to do a limited edition run of uh, darkroom prints because then I could do a second edition printing of it, you know? I I don't like the idea of being cast off to not being able to print and sell images that, that I've made, so. Um, yeah, Gene, I, I, I understand that. Um, I Again, it, it just comes down to whoever your, your target audience is. Collectors and in institutions prefer that prints are signed and numbered on the back and never hot press mounted. Interesting to know. Yeah, I think understanding the, the market that you're going into and if you're going into collectors and institutions, well then there you go. You got you gotta sign and mat it and uh number it and, and all that kind of stuff, so which I totally respect. Florian says, uh well I'm curating and doing exhibitions myself. I usually do small number exhibitions for series of photographs and sell unlimited prints for a selection of other pictures. Sure, that's a good way of going about it. And you know, like here's the here's the thing, like I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm not I'm not arguing that point at all. Um so Let's see here, 626. We started a little bit late today, so this is probably going to go a little bit shorter. We're at about an hour right now. I'm probably going to cut it off in a couple minutes here. Um, 
but yeah let's see here Jacob says on the note of documentaries I haven't gotten into many of those what other ones would you recommend so Jacob actually on my uh inst or um, not on my Instagram on my YouTube uh if you go to the playlist there's um great documentaries is what it's called and I have an entire playlist of great photographic documentaries um and then I, I think that there's another playlist uh, about it just says documentaries that I'm enjoying. Um, so great documentaries is photographic specific documentaries. Um, documentaries that I'm enjoying is uh, documentaries on anything and everything that I'm finding interesting. Other artists, uh, musicians, a lot of jazz documentaries and stuff in there. So um, I really suggest going over there because anytime I find a full length documentary on YouTube uh, that's worth watching, I put it up in there. So that's a resource that you can uh, kind of tap into. Uh, finding Vivian Mayer is a, is a good one as well. Jean says, I am French and I had to learn all these aspects of the art market, which I did not know when I started. Yes. And it could be, it could be different overseas, you know, than, than it is in a lot of different places. And I can understand where a lot of art museums and, uh, collectors and curators want, uh, additioned prints. Um, so yeah. Also Tales by Night. On Netflix interesting I'll have to check that out so uh, let's see here I I'll have time for maybe one more question and then I'm gonna get jumping off I'm still like really groggy and uh, I'm really hungry I'm starting to get kind of hangry <laughs> whoops spilt water all over my Wacom tablet anyways uh, let's see here Gonna give time for one more comment, one more question, anything like that that we can kind of rant on for a couple seconds, and then uh, I think we'll probably be calling it a night. All right. Somebody's probably typing something in, but uh, I think uh, either it's lagging and I'm not getting anything, or maybe everyone's shutting down too for the night. So. Uh, I think that this is a good place to kick it off. This is a very sporadic and, and random, random uh, live stream today. And uh, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know, but hey, we still got together. We still got to uh, to hang out. So um, late man, got to work on a zine. See you, buddy. Crickets. <laughs> yeah, Pete, seriously. Anyways. Uh, no, yeah, so this is a fun one. It was kind of all over the place, but uh, at the same time, I just enjoy having conversations with you guys, so it doesn't always have to be like the most deep and intellectual conversation. Sometimes it's uh, just laughing and joking and, and ridiculing thought process, so <laughs> you, gotta, you got me through uh, editing photos. Nice. I'm glad to hear. Awesome. Thank you guys. I appreciate you guys <laughs> and I love you guys. Uh, go ahead and hit some thumbs up if you uh, if you enjoyed the content or if you thought that this one wasn't good. Throw a thumbs down down. I don't care. Uh, I just I enjoy getting you guys feedback and uh, and just connecting with you guys. So thank you guys. I love you guys. I'll see you guys on the next video on the next live stream and later on wherever else I see you. So uh, I'll talk to you later. Peace.